Let's try one more. One more here. So first thing we're going to do, of course, we're going to make this. What number goes on the inside? 0.7. On inside. 0.86. I'm going to put 0.86, that way I don't let that zero confuse me. On the outside of my division problem, I have a, sure, 0 0.7 or just 0 0.7. And how many places do I need to move the decimal? One or two? One. So I'm not really looking in here. I'm looking out here, and that's dictating how many spaces I move. So one space over means one space over. And of course, I put my decimal on the top of my quotient. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Okay, let's check this out. How many times does 7 go into 8? Once. So I know it's a 1. I multiply, I subtract, I get 1. I bring down the 6. Okay, how many times does 7 go into 16? I'd get 14. I'd subtract, I'd get 2. True? Yes. I add a 0 on, I bring it down, I get 20. How many times does 7 go into 20? 2. Okay, that's 14. I subtract, I get 6. How many times does 7 go into that? Okay, subtract. How much am I going to get there? Four. That's a lot of work. Some of these decimals, they don't end right away, do they? So a lot of times, you're qu yeah, it's going to go on for a long time. Okay. Uh, a really long time. In fact, I don't even know if this one ever ends. You did? Oh, you should have waited for me. That's why we do them together. So a lot of times, here's what's going to happen. A lot of times your question will say this, but then at the very end of it, they'll say, and round to the nearest blank. Don't ignore that, because if you do, you might be going forever. Okay, this number repeats, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it doesn't end. It, it just repeats somewhere. All right, so you, you don't want to do that for eternity, do you? That sucks. If you're doing math for the rest of your, well, you'll be doing that anyway. But, uh, <laughs> but that would suck to work on this one problem, right? You don't do that. So a lot of times I'll say, do this and round to the nearest. Don't ignore that. Round to the nearest, let's say, uh, 10, 100. In this case, hundred. It might be the tenth. It might be the thousandth. In this case, I want to round to the hundredth. You ready? Yeah. Can you locate where the hundredth is in my problem up here? The second. Yes. This one? Yes. Okay. This is the one I'm looking. Do I need to go any further though? No. So as soon as you make it one yeah. past the decimal place where you're supposed to round, stop. So if I had said to the tenth, we'd have gone too far. We'd have gone one too far. We wouldn't even need this eight. If I would have said thousandth, we'd need one more to be able to round that. Are you with me? Yeah. So here, if I'm supposed to round to the hundredth, I know I'm going to have 1.2 what? Three. Three. We look at our hundredth, that's right here. That eight says you round that up one spot, so we have 1.23. That's rounded to the hundredth. We know how to round. We know what the hundredth is from our place value work. Now we can go one more little place value, and that's going to allow us to round to the appropriate one that the question is asking for. Does that work for you? Okay. Okay, here's what I'd like for you. I want you to do one on your own. Let's have you round this number to the nearest. Let's go thousandth again. That one works pretty well. So divide and round to the thousandth.
course, we're setting this thing up. We're moving that decimal place, dividing, and then round to the thousand. So 8.6 outside of 519.37. Number of decimal places we're moving is? One. 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 Good. So 86, and we change it to 5,193.7. And of course, we'll put the decimal place right up there. Oh my gosh, to the thousandth. We've got a lot of work to do. So we'll start with, with 86. 86 into 5? No. 51? No. 519? How many times into 519? Six times? Six times? So that's 51. We subtract, we get, oh, how much? 33. 3, but we bring down the 3. I want your eyes on the board here real quick. You guys are okay on the 3? Yeah. You okay on getting that 3? Does 86 go into 3? No. Well, that's why I brought one down. Does it go into 33? No. no. Okay. What would you do now? Put a zero on top ah. of it. So you would bring down a number, but not before putting a zero on the top of your problem. Because on, on the top, I'm going to give you something like this, just, just like this on a test. Some people are going to give me 6 point, and some people are going to give me 60 point. What's the correct answer? 60. It's 60. If you, here's, here's the key. If you bring down a number, you have to put a number up top. Even if it's zero, you have to put something up there. So here was three. We brought down a three. Now you have to put something up there. To bring down another one, you have to put something up there. Zero. That's right. And now we need to bring down another one. And we check 330, oh, 86 into 337. Three times. Evenly? Three. No. No. 258. You get 79. 79, okay, bring, bring down, down the zero. Ooh. All right. Nine times. Nine? Seven, seven, four. Seven, seven, four. And you guys are good, you sound like robots. Yeah. 16. <laughs> you get 16. Okay. Bring down zero. Oh. Keep going. Oh my gosh. Keep going. Twice. Whew. Keep going. Wait, twice? Yeah. One time. One time. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> my robot stopped. <laughs> okay, 86. Yeah, 86 because you're going to get 74, right? Yes. Now, hang on a second. We can stop here? Yeah. We need the thousand. We need to go one more than that. 86 into 740. Eight times. Eight times? <laughs> Let's see, 64, 68. Oh my, okay, 6, 13, 52. We can stop there. We can stop there, though. Yeah, it's not, it's not going to end for a while. Well, maybe, I don't know. But it doesn't really matter. We just wanted to go to the thousand. If we've made it one past the thousand, we're okay. Are we going to leave the one alone or raise the one up? Raise the one up. That's our thousandth place value. We look right here. We'll have 60.392. Done. Make sure I feel okay with this so far. Now, very quickly, I want to show you a couple things that we can do. Then we'll do two more examples and we'll be done with our day today. First thing that we can do if you're ever dividing by a multiple of 10, so like 10, uh, well, a multiple of 10, starting with a 1, like 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. All you need to do with this, if you do the division, you can't do it that way, like your long division. However, what this is essentially going to do is simply move that decimal place. 
just like multiplying by 100 does, or multiplying by 1,000 does. It just moves a decimal place without changing the value of each digit. So in our case right here, if we're dividing by 10,000, what this does is moves the decimal place to the left, however many zeros you have. How many zeros do I have? Four. Four zeros. It's going to take this number and make it smaller by a factor of 10,000. That means I'm going to take this decimal place and move it four places. Wait, wait, which way? Dividing right. makes... Right. If I move it right, that's making the number bigger. Go left. I'm dividing this number into 10,000 little parts. Is that going to make it smaller or bigger? Smaller. 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 Dividing... Left, left. Point zero four nine three six eight. Why would you do it like that? It's a lot quicker than doing... This. No, but I don't think you probably move to the right, no? If you multiply, yeah. Oh, so it's different for division? Yeah, it's opposite. Opposite for division. If you did this one, I mean, you could see that you're going to have the decimal there, right? 10,000, no, 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 yes, goes in four times. So zero. Because the number's on the opposite. Oh. Those are different problems. Multiplying by 10,000, you're making that number bigger. You're moving it by a factor of 10,000 to the right. Dividing, you're moving to the left. You're making that number smaller by a factor of 10,000. So, if you don't remember that on your test, no big deal. Can you still do it this way? Of course. You just add a whole bunch of zeros and work out the exact same way. That would be our answer there, 0.0, .0 .9. This is it. So all you have to do is cross up the zeros. Move them the appropriate number of zeros. That's what we're doing. Okay, last thing I need to show you here, folks. When you're faced with a problem like this, will you be able to do it for evaluation? Do you know what goes where? Yes. Yeah. Okay, what's going to go on the top of our fraction, please? Negative, negative 6.8. Over? Oh, 0 .8. 0 0 .8. Okay, now wait a second. Uh, can I do that? Yes. Yeah. yes. You can set this up as a, as a division problem. You just need to know what goes on the inside and what goes on the outside. What's inside? So Whatever the top one is. Also, is our answer going to be positive or negative? Negative. So we'll make sure that's negative. 76.8, and then you do it according to that. I won't finish the problem off for you, I just want to make sure that you, you see that. How many people feel okay with what we talked about so far? So you can also do one more thing, you can check for solutions, but it's very similar to doing our, our evaluation right here. So at this point, you should be able to divide any decimals I give you. If it ends, you can add zeros. I'm sorry, you can add zeros to the end of your decimal until you get the, the <laughs> lack of a remainder. Or read the problem, and if it has you round, go to one more decimal place than you need, and then round appropriately. How many of you feel pretty good about what we talked about? Good deal. <laughs>